Hello and welcome to this video on how to create impedance matching networks on the Smith chart. And particularly, if you use uh, helpful software to do the calculations, it actually becomes quite easy and you can learn it in a matter of minutes. So let's go ahead and get started. The Smith chart is a graphical mapping of the reflection coefficient, magnitude, and phase to specific combinations of resistance and reactance, or conductance and susceptance. The formula for reflection coefficient establishes this mapping between complex reflection coefficient and complex impedance or admittance. When we solve for the real and imaginary parts of the impedance in terms of the reflection coefficient, we find that the constant values of resistance and reactance trace out circles and arcs on the Smith chart. When we have a termination or load that is not matched to the system impedance, we get unwanted reflection of power from the input of the termination. However, if we place components ahead of the termination, we find that the reflections can be eliminated and the termination becomes matched, improving the transmission of power to the component. The Smith chart makes determining the right components to use for this process graphical and intuitive. Furthermore, with the aid of software to perform the calculations, the process distills down to a couple of easy to remember rules of thumb. First, let's have a quick orientation to the impedances on the chart. If you look at the horizontal axis, note that just like a Cartesian plot, it goes from zero to infinity, from right to left. Now you'll have no problem remembering where the short and open circuit terminations lie. The short is zero ohms, so it's on the left. The open is infinity on the right. Inductive terminations are in the upper half, and capacitive terminations are in the lower half. The simple rules of thumb to remember for impedance matching are that inductors move the termination upwards, and capacitors move downwards. Secondly, series components move along the red curves, and shunt components move along green curves. Using these rules, along with the assistance of software to take care of the calculations, will have you designing matching networks in a matter of minutes. In the Smith chart matching tool that I've written and made available on rfmentor.com, you will notice that there are two circles highlighted that pass through the center of the chart. These are very useful circles because if you can get your termination to intersect with one of these circles, you're basically one component away from having a matched impedance. Let's look at a couple of examples of how to create matching networks. So if we go to the software, what you'll see when you first pull it up is a Smith chart with one dot on it that represents your termination, whatever that may be. So, to start creating a matching network, the first thing you need to do is just move that termination to the point that represents whatever termination you're trying to match. So, I'll just move it to pretty much any kind of random place on the chart. Generally, it shouldn't matter much where on the chart you start. Uh, you should be able to create a matching network from that termination. Now, suppose that this is our termination here. What we'd like to do is match to the center of the chart using the couple of basic rules of thumb that we mentioned earlier. So if we're trying to intersect and get to the center, uh, we want to land on one of these circles, circles that'll take us down to the center. So if we start at this point, we can either go up or down and it looks like a red circle is the most convenient uh, immediate 
uh, circle that's going to intersect with one of these circles that goes to the center. So we can go up or down on red as our first step. Let's try going up. So up on red, up is an inductor and red is series. So I'll add a series inductor. And the nice thing about the software is you can just drag the components right on the chart. So I just drag the, the inductor until it intersects with this circle that goes to the center. The circle uh, going through the center from here is green, and I need to go down. So down on green is a shunt because it's green, and down is capacitor. So I'll add a shunt capacitor, change its values just by dragging it, and there we go. We're matched. Now the combination of our original termination plus the addition of a series inductor of 2.5 nanohenries and a shunt capacitor of 10.25 picofarads will get us to pretty much a perfect match. Now, of course, we're going to be limited by our availability of components, so we won't get exactly the right components, and we won't get a perfect match, uh, but we will be pretty close and probably good enough. Let's look at another example from that same starting point. I'll delete those two items. And now, instead of going up first, I can go down on red first and find this intersection here. So let's start out by going down on red. Down is capacitor and red is series. So I'll start out with a series capacitor. I drag its value until it intersects with the unit uh, circle here, a uh, circle representing a one normalized one ohm. And now I need to go up on the green. So up on green is a shunt inductor. And we just drag that value until it intersects with the center or lands at the center, and again, we're matched. So very quickly, we found a second matching network that consists of a 8.5 picofarad series capacitor and a 9.8 nanohenry shunt inductor does the same task. Now, Inductors and capacitors values are frequency dependent, so this matching network really is currently set up to work at 500 megahertz. Uh, if we look at the same network at 10% higher, 550 megahertz, uh, we can see that at 550 megahertz the match is not uh, not quite as good. We have a reflection coefficient of 0.15 at that frequency. Uh, so matching over a broad range of frequencies becomes challenging because of the frequency dependency of inductors and capacitors. You could use resistors, which don't have a frequency dependency, but then you would have resistive components which dissipate energy, and that kind of defeats the purpose somewhat of creating a matching network in the first place. You can find out more about impedance matching and use the tool itself at rfmentor.com.